Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Howe and I'm the Vice President of Emerging Technologies at Zscaler. I'm gonna dive now into the three lines or boxes you see here um, on my side that talk about the idea of verification in terms of the overall zero trust architecture. If you'd like to see a high level video of that, we've already created one, so please check out that, that video as well. But this is a dive in the specifics of what we call Verify. And let me talk about that in some depth. Now, verification, Verification is understanding these three things you see down here. Now, these are categories of initiators, we call them, but those categories can contain many things. So ultimately, we're gonna talk about here is the users, humans and their devices, things, and workloads, and how we go through the process of verifying them. To do that, we need to kind of step back and understand, well, what happens when these guys wanna to talk to a service somewhere on the internet, whatever it might be, or a private service for what it matters. Now, in order to make sure we get that connection, we need to think about that these things are listening for connections from initiators. So there's normally gonna be some sort of listening point uh, coming in. If you think about it, when you are using a service on the internet or even your local network, you have to be able to send a request to it. So that destination service is listening for a, that inbound connection. We call that an inbound listener. So every service has an inbound listener and that is part of the challenge when it comes to security that's also known as an attack surface. So when we connect these three initiators through, we want to make sure that they're A, only connecting to what they're allowed to, but B, not leaving any inbound listeners or inbound services open so that they can be also attacked. Now, the goal of this is to ensure that, that every connection is going through these controls onto the destination application. So to verify all this, we have to go through some stages. The first one is understanding the who. So let me write, this down here, and I'm not talking about the band, I'm talking about the identity. So I'm gonna talk about who. Now what does who really break down into? Now if I really look at these three boxes, and I'm gonna go into some details here, we're gonna have uh, users, we're gonna have things, and we're gonna have workloads. Now what does that all break down into detail about? So. If I'm talking about the who, I need to understand the differences between the identity of the users. Now we can get this today from standardized environments like identity providers, so SAML, SKIM, those sort of things. So I can put this here, IDP. Now identity provider is a standardized way in which your enterprises are able to not only authenticate and authorize your users, but we can, can, can uh, share the information about that authentication and authorization. So what tends to happen with these environments is a SAML or SKIM response will be sent onto the Zero Trust Exchange or the Zero Trust architecture to define the who for the users. That's great, but then what about the user when they change their role with their, their device? So there could be different devices. You could have a user plus a personal device or a corporate device. So we have devices that differentiate, that will be used to differentiate the access rights. So users on their own device, a personal device versus a corporate device should have different contextual access rights under the who. But this can be as simple as I have my laptop from the, from the company and I'm on my phone or I'm on my iPad or my tablet. These should have different rights and responsibilities and that granularity is something that you in the enterprise have to define, but you need to be able to differentiate and consume that. So easily enough, we can identify the um, user's identity, but we can also start assigning pro um, policy and we'll, we'll um, identity, a greater granularity of identity around the type of device they're coming from. Now, that same sort of level of granularity can move into other thing, well, the things or IoT and OT services. So I call them things here to simplify, but Internet of Things, OT, operational technology as well. Now, how do we differentiate that? Well, there are standards out there for this today but they're not properly consumed or shared around the internet. Some companies are building things, there are things like, like X509 certificates that can be used, but they're not standardized across the entirety of uh, solutions. So we need to start thinking about how that can be consumed and differentiated based upon the different environments. So what we tend to look at customers with around things is we say, well, can you differentiate them based upon their function? Is it surveillance as an example, could be um, as a camera, I'll just put a camera here as well. I'm getting towards the edge of my frame. Be very careful. 
Um, so could we categorize like that? Or could we categorize maybe it's a thing? Is it, is it a cutting, um, cutting the chocolate in half as an example? That's a really good fun one we see in a lot of our enterprises. Cutting things in half, opening, cutting, or show, cutting, or closing doors, these sorts of things. Now, right away, we can step back and look. The business function of this is to cut the chocolate or open the door. So we know we have a function similar to the user plus device that allows us to build a identity around that uh, who for the things. And then we move into workloads. And workloads themselves are, well, anything that could be actually in a cloud environment up here talking to another one. Could be data center to data center. It could be APIs on the internet talking to APIs. So how do we differentiate those and create the right identity so we can provide the right controls? So we need to think of things, for example, like the type of um, solution. Is it SAP? Is it a, um, a file share? Could be much more than that. It could also be a SaaS service. It could be an API. It could be any of these things. And the goal is to, from a business logic point of view, differentiate those so that we understand the who part. We can start putting more context around them, which becomes the next part of the verification. So to outline that, I'm going to draw a line up here and we'll go into the context. Now, in context, I'll, I'll also write it over here so we're clear it's all on the same plane. Now, context in itself is not necessarily just a, oh, it's allowed or it's not, it's a, a device or, or whatever it is. It's actually understanding the entirety of that request. Now, when I say request, I mean this happens every time there is a request for access. We need to understand the context. So a really simple example, one you hear about all the time from a lot of security vendors is the magical travel. Where somebody is in uh, requested one application and their, their location might be for that initial request in Sydney, and then five minutes later they're requesting another application and they're in London. Impossible in terms of physical travel. But that's not just the contextualization you need to have because that person could be using a different gateway. They could be using a different service. They may actually have a dedicated function to force them out a different part of the world, maybe to access a geo-specific geo application. So it's not just about the location, it's understanding the entirety of that. And there are things to consider across all of these three areas, such as roles or the responsibilities. So you could actually say that a user uh, with a certain job description gets a certain access, whereas a machine on a certain environment gets certain access. There's also understanding, an example would be locations. So I Call out locations because you may have a factory, and inside that factory there are sublocations, which I'll go to in a second. But that location, the factory environment, has different access than perhaps your sales uh, office, and that again gives you context into differentiated access. Then you may have again sublocations, which I'll put a, a sub here. But sublocations would be well in that inside that office, maybe that branch office where you have the salespeople. There are some salespeople, there are some IT people, and there's actually some printers or some door scanners or something else. That sublocation needs to also be understood because you can't apply policy for everything at once. You, well, you could, but that's not the, the direction for zero trust. You want to be granular. So we need to understand that. And a final example, and there's plenty more inside of context to consider, would be things like uh, the trust that the, the uh, user or the role and responsibility and site will have. So. Not only is this device in a trusted, perhaps, ecosystem inside a location. So a simple example would be you're in the office. Your office is trusted. Maybe it's a physical trust. You have to badge in to get into the building. Anyone in there is considered secure to some extent versus anyone who's outside of that ecosystem is not considered secure. Again, these are business logic differentiations that we want to consume as contextual information as part of the identity. And this could be many, many things, but the goal is to give um, enterprises the opportunity to define these as part of their differentiated policy controls for verification of identities. The final part is actually the, probably the most interesting, and that is the understanding the destination that they're going to, so the what. In this case, it could be what, it could be where, but ultimately I'm gonna say what here. And what I mean by this is what is the destination? What is this service up the top here that they're trying to connect to? And the reason why we're doing this early on is because it allows us to make uh, control statements around that access as well as policy enforcement when we get to that. But that what is going to be understanding whether it's uh, external or internal. And what I mean by that is if you look up here, I've written uh, before control. 
So this is something that you, something that you do control. This would be uh, an internal service, something you manage and control in your enterprise. Whereas not controlled is something that is external. So a good example for internal would be your internal SAP system. An external would be Microsoft 365, something that you, you consume, but you don't control. Now, if we know this, can we differentiate the internal and external? Then we also have to ask the question of, well, do we know it? And if we don't know it, we have to discover it. Now, I'm playing with space here, but discovery means that we can actually see that the user is requesting a service that is either known, and if it's, of course, if it's known, it's what, under what category and what context, but if it's unknown, we have to flag it and send it off for investigation. Is it a newly created domain, something that could be uh, both very legitimate and completely illegitimate depending on the context of that domain being generated? Is it an application that's never been seen before? Is it a new service that someone stood up inside your infrastructure as a service environment? Is it an existing platform? All these things need to be understood. Again, contextually, the reason why we do this to understand the who, the context, and the what is to make sure that when the connection is requested, now remember, this is assessed on every single application access request. So when a new request is put through, we need to understand this so that the right control layer, which we'll come to in a second, is what we, uh, is right, right controls in the right control layer is applied at the right time. That means that we are looking at this consistently on a regular basis, not just, as I said before, not just once a day, it's done every time there's a request. This is a continual evaluation of access in terms of the identity of the user, the thing, or the workload. So we're verifying that end to end. In the next section, we're gonna dive into these pink boxes, which is the idea of getting into the control layer and what that means for your, you and your enterprises. So I hope this has been a, a bit of a dive into the depths of, we're talking the verification of identity in terms of how that works in the zero trust world. And we'll dive into the next part in uh, the pink boxes in a little bit. So thank you for your time and uh, let's go to the next video. Thank you.